This is a fairly simple project, which is to make some bicycle handlebars, which will be later used for our larger bicycle assembly. The handlebars are nothing more than a hollow tube, which has been bent into the appropriate shape. In order to do this, we're going to be using a command called sweep, which takes a profile, in this case, two concentric circles to represent the cross section of the tube, drives it along a three-dimensional path to create a sort of three-dimensional noodle. Let's look at just one half of this. We'll take a look at the front view. We see that the handlebar first comes out horizontally, goes uphill, and then goes horizontal again. If we look at this from the top view, we see again that this short section goes horizontal and this section which was going uphill continues straight along the x-axis and then this area which is also horizontal actually bends backwards a little bit for a little more comfort where your hand will be gripping the handlebar. We notice between these three segments are the actual bends which have a generous radius to transition from one segment to the next. We don't want to have sharp corners in these areas because we can't actually bend a tube with sharp corners. As I showed a moment ago, the handlebars have one particular appearance when viewed from the front view and another appearance when viewed from the top view. We somehow have to take these two pieces of information and combine them together to create a path that this profile is going to be swept along. This probably suggests to you already that we are somehow going to have to use two sketches and use the projected curve command in order to combine them together. Here's what our starter file looks like, which consists of two sketches, one on the front plane, shows the handlebar path from the front view, and you notice that it's just a simple stick figure of three segments without the radii blending the segments together at the sharp corners. And from the top view, you also see what the three segments look like. This segment, this segment, and this segment. What we want to do is combine those together using a projected sketch to get a three-dimensional path. Now if you want to make your own custom handlebars, perhaps with additional segments or very differently shaped segments, you might want to be modifying these sketches before you start. But for now, I encourage you to watch the entire video and see what the process is, and then go back and change your sketches before you actually complete this assignment. As always, I like to make copies of my layout sketches so that the layouts always stay at the top of the feature tree. In this case, this is such a simple project that it's somewhat unnecessary, but just as a matter of course, I'll do that anyway. I'm going to start by copying the front layout onto the front plane. Now in past projects, whenever we've copied elements from a layout sketch, it's always been a, only a part of the layout sketch. In this case, we can copy the entire sketch. And instead of having to click on each individual element in using convert entities, in this case, what we can do is use the convert entities, go to the feature tree, and just click on the entire sketch in the feature tree that will copy all of the elements in the sketch. Doing the same for the top plane, make a new sketch, convert entities. Now I will select the top layout sketch and finish the sketch. I can take these two sketches and combine them together using Insert Curve Projected. So here we see the segment which was horizontal in the front view and then the top view. The segment which went uphill in the front view traveled along the x-axis in the top view 
in this segment, which was horizontal in the front view, but angles backwards in the top view. Now this is the path of our handlebars, but we notice one little problem is that we still have these sharp corners where the segments come together. We know that we want a nice generate fillet in these corners in order to make a nice smooth path when we sweep the circular cross section. Now this is a case where I want to use a 3D sketch, which we have not used before. So underneath the normal sketch, there's the little arrow here. We go down to 3D sketch. We're now we're sketching in a 3D environment instead of a 2D environment. 3D sketches could be very confusing to use because we have a 2D screen that we are working with and we have no depth perception. I sometimes like to use 3D sketches in order to copy elements into the 3D environment and add things like fillets to corner points that exist in 3D space. So that's what we're going to do. Just like a 2D sketch, we can actually use convert entities to copy elements into our 3D environment. So just like before, I'll click on convert entities using my feature tree. I'll just click on curve 2, which is this projected curve. And it has copied all the elements from the projected sketch into my 3D sketch. Now what I can do is add some fillets to these corners. I'm going to add 70 millimeter fillets to this point and this point. We'll take a look at this from the top view. Here's my fillet in this upper corner. We'll take a look at this from the front view. Here's a fillet from this segment to the uphill segment and the fillet again seen in the upper corner. It's easier to do this in the 3D environment because we really didn't know what these fillets would have looked like if we had drawn them simply in two different two-dimensional sketches. If we had tried to draw these fillets in our 2D sketches and then tried to project them together Chances are that these no longer would have been fillets, but it would have been some sort of an oval or a spline shape. Now by adding them in the 3D environment, we know that we have pure circular fillets. This is especially the case for this particular fillet here, because this one is joining together a line which is going uphill and a line which is going backwards. So let's go ahead and finish this sketch. And here we see that our sketch here says 3D Sketch 1. And we also notice that the symbol for a 3D sketch is a little bit different from the symbol for a 2D sketch. This projected curve here represents steps 3, 4, and 5 in our example file, and our 3D sketch represents step 6. Now I'm going to hide our projected curve, leaving just our 3D sketch. This will be the path that we will use to sweep the circular profile of the tubing. It's now time to make that profile and go ahead and make the sweep. On the right plane, we'll draw a new sketch. We'll draw a circle, give it a diameter of 25 millimeters. That will be the outside of the tubing, and we want to make another circle inside that will represent the inner surface of the tubing. So using the offset command, we'll offset this 1.5 millimeters, and I'll reverse the direction to make sure this is offset inward. Now what I want to do is make sure that the center of this circle is traveling along this path when it is swept. To do that, I want to add a Pierce relation between the center of the circle and this path. Not a coincident, but a Pierce. I'm going to add relations, or if I want, I can hold my control key down and pre-select this center, this path, and select Pierce. And I will finish the sketch. It is always good practice to use the Pierce relation between your profile and your path as opposed to using the coincident relation. The sketch we just created is step 7 from the example file. Now time to go ahead and sweep our profile along this path. 
going to features, sw swept boss slash base. We have two boxes here. The top box is for our profile. That's this little symbol here. The bottom box is for the path. Click on our profile. Now it automatically highlights the path box. Click on our path and we see a preview of the noodle that's going to be created with the sweep operation. If we look at our options, we see that the normal option is follow path. What that means is whatever orientation this profile had to the path where it started, that orientation will be maintained all along the, the path itself. Being that we started with a profile that was at right angles to our path or normal to the path, it will take this profile and maintain that normal orientation to the path all the way along the sweep. So here we see as the path goes upward, the profile is tilted to maintain that normal relation to the path. This is probably 90% of the time the option that you're going to be using. To show another, to contrast this with another option, if we say keep normal constant, what will, this will do is keep the orientation of the profile the same along the entire sweep path, which we can see will give us kind of a funny pinched look in these areas. So in this case, we're going to just go follow path, which is the default. And that will give us one half of our handlebar. Sweep is step eight, and step nine is simply choosing the right plane, choosing mirror. We're going to mirror this entire body, make sure merge solids is checked, and that is our completed handlebar. If you want to make a few modifications to this, you can always go back to your layout sketch. Perhaps you want taller handlebars. Something like that. Or perhaps you want the handle portion where your hands would rest to angle back farther, so you go into the top layout sketch. Get something that looks like that. Now the change I just made was a very simple one, just by changing some of the dimensions in the layout sketch. But what if I want to do something a little more radical? For example, not having three segments, but perhaps having a fourth that angles way back for my handle portion of my handlebars. In that case, it might be a little easier to do that before we even start the process of making the path and the sweep. For example, if I go back to my front layout, maybe I want to add another segment here that goes downward very slightly. I'm not going to bother to dimension this at the moment. So if I have that on my front layout, I need to add a corresponding segment to my top layout. So going to my top layout, I'm going to add a segment which represents where my hands will rest, and this will come way back now. I need to make sure that whatever the width of the handlebars is in the X direction in the top layout matches the width in the front layout, so this point and this point correspond to each other. So one way I can do that is draw a vertical center line and make a coincident relation between this point and this point. I could also just simply make a vertical relation between this point and this point without even bothering with the center line, but somehow this helps illustrate the idea a little bit better. So we can see these are in alignment with each other, meaning that they have the same x value. I'll just drag this back a little farther. So now when I go to copy these and project them together, I get a path in three-dimensional space that looks like this. 
So let me hide these two sketches to show that. And if I copy this into a 3D sketch, I can go ahead and add fillets to each of these corners like before. This is what the completed sweep would look like once the profile was drawn. And then the final handlebar, when mirrored, would appear like this. This is just one of many different modifications that can be done to this basic design, you can do whatever you desire for your particular bicycle. Or if you're happy with the example file just as is, you can leave it alone.